go. Okay, hey guys. What we want to talk about now a little bit is cavity nesting owls. And so, as you know, we have the pygmy owl project, the sawwet, the boreals, screech owls, all the cavity nesters. And so one of the things we've learned over the years is the importance of old dead trees for cavity nesting owls. So most of those smaller species are what we call obligate cavity nesters. They need a natural hole in a tree or they need a woodpecker hole in a tree. And the woodpeckers, as part of their courtship and nesting, create these cavities that a lot of the owls will use. So what we try to do is identify the trees that are important to the owls in order that we can tell forest managers, firewood cutters, a private land property managers, uh, landowners, etc., that a lot of these are important and to try to leave them where you can. We understand the safety considerations, aesthetic considerations, disease and all that, but not just to take every one of them down, if possible. And so what we try to do is locate the nest sites, for example, a pinky owl nest site and a solid owl nest site. And they tend to be in cavities, natural and or made by woodpeckers, and then identify the species of trees, take some measurement data. And what we found over the years that a solid owl may like a tree this big with a flicker or a pileated woodpecker hole, where a pygmy owl may like a smaller diameter tree with a natural hole, or those made by sap suckers or hairy woodpeckers. So there's differences between them. So saving one snag isn't necessarily good for all species of owls. Nonetheless, we're trying to identify those and we want to be able to make this information available to you and again, available to all the people who might cut down snags. So here, what we have is a busted off top. It has partial bark on it. It has what appears to be a pileated woodpecker hole, which would be very suitable, at least on the outside, for a sawwet owl. We don't know what the inside of the cavity looks like, which is another criteria that we're trying to figure out because you don't know it just by looking at it. So these are some of the things we'd like you to consider. And um, hopefully we'll be able to provide information for actually the timber industry and firewood cutters in the future. Thank you.